Okay, so now that we have uh, introduced the Coding with Chrome environment, let's go ahead and open up Coding with Chrome and we'll work on a new example just to introduce some basic concepts around variables. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Code and we're going to open up Basic Coding and we're going to talk, we're going to rename this file, we'll call this Dates. So now that we know how to write some basic code and we know how to write things out to the document, we're going to talk a little bit about variables. So there are all sorts of different variables that we could have. Uh, we could have numbers, we could have text strings, we could have dates, we could have more complicated things that represent larger, uh, larger objects. So uh, to start off, we could just you know create a variable. We create a variable by using the var keyword and we give it a name. Now your name has to start with a letter or an underscore, but typically they start with letters and they contain letters and numbers. So uh, if I call this num for number, I can say this is equal to zero. And what this variable does, it just gives me a place to store some information. If I want to see what's in that variable, I could use document.write. And you can see here, this is going to show me zero. I could also take advantage of some of the logging capabilities within uh, coding with Chrome so that I can see some debug info, warning, or error information as well. So instead of like writing this out, if I just want to know what's in num, I might use console.debug num. And now if I click on debug, you can see here it's just outputting zero. And uh, if I wanted to provide some more information, I could actually create a string, a uh, text string out of my variable by saying this the number is, and then I can just add num there. And now you can see I've got my full text over here. And you can use console.debug. You can also use console.info. And you can see now I've got one in the info and I've got one, one message in debug. I can use console.warn. And I can use console.error. So you can see now I can use all of these. So I've got a couple of different ways to display information. So variables can be numbers, they can be text strings, they can be all sorts of things. I could create, you know, var text is equal to this is some text. And then I can, you know, document.write text, just so we can see how that works. And that looks just like that. Or I could say this is some text, and I could say var other text is equal to this is a number. And then I can go ahead and join that with my number. And then I can write, you know, just like we saw the markup last time, we can write a blank line, document.write other text. So now we can do all of those things right in line. It's nice and easy, and you know, we can we can start using variables to build for more calculations. But a special type of variable we might want to create is a date. So if I wanted to say today, we can go ahead and create a variable called today, and we'll set that equal to a new date. So there's a little bit of difference here. Since date is an object, we have to create it using new. Uh, something like a, a number or something like a basic text string, those are really simple, so we don't have to create uh, create them using new. But new provides some area for, you know, something like more complicated like a date might require a little bit more space. So we're telling the uh, computer to basically reserve some memory to create some space for that. And that's how we're using the new keyword here. So now, if we want to see what that date is, let's go ahead and write another blank line. Document.write today. And that'll write out just like a text string. And you can see here, Tuesday, December 8th, 2015, 1022. And if you look at my clock, that's about where we are right now. So uh, this allows us to create this new date. Um, now, we can also do some other things with the date. You know, we could do, uh, we could identify, uh, like what year it is, today.getYear. You can see here at the end, we have uh, 115, um, because when we're dealing with dates, things can get a little confusing. Let's go ahead and put this, uh, this blank line in place, and you can see here 115. So uh, what that's actually saying is it's 2015, so the years here, they start with 1900, uh, which might be a little confusing, but if we add 1900 here, you'll see it, it comes right up. There we go, so you can see 2015. We could also, um, let's go ahead and copy this and paste this here, and uh, we can use document.write uh, today.getMonth, which you would think that it would come up with 12, but it comes up with 11, because our months start with zero. Uh, so years can be a little bit complicated, months can be a little bit complicated, and if we write that 
plus one there, and that's going to modify this so that we have we start with twelve. Uh, we could also use document dot write today dot get time, which is going to give. Let's go ahead and insert that blank line in. So we'll go ahead and edit, copy, edit, paste. So you can see this is actually a this is a long number. This is a big number, and what this number represents is the number of milliseconds that have passed uh, since January first, nineteen seventy. So just to show that, you know, if we create another variable, we'll call that start date, and we'll say this is nineteen seventy zero one zero one, and if we write out a blank line, and then we write out start date dot get time you see we get zero so this this marks the start of our, our our time so this big number that we have here this uh this 1449 or 1449588285348 says that on or at this current moment there have been uh quite a few milliseconds we're looking at uh let me see uh, thousands millions billions trillions, uh, I think quadrillions, uh, lots of milliseconds prior to uh, right now. Uh, so we can actually use this and in the next lesson we'll, we'll show how we can use these dates and we can use this time and we can use these milliseconds uh, to calculate you know, a, a countdown from our, uh, to our next birthday. So thanks for watching this lesson. I hope you learned a little bit about variables and a little bit about dates and we'll jump into the next lesson where we'll actually show uh, how long it's going to be until our next birthday. Thanks for watching.